Is Vampire Survivor the stupidest success in indie gaming? How did a WASD-based retro game where monsters spawn in endless waves, maps are mostly looping content, and you don't even need to target your abilities, become a huge success? With an overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam and hundreds of thousands of reviews. There are a lot of reasons people have for playing games. Some games test our intellect. Some games provide a community and friendship. Some games test our dexterity and agility. While others exist solely for us to chill the hell out and glaze over staring at some flashy lights. If you've not played Vampire Survivor before, it's a pretty clear example, at least on the surface, of the latter. Its developer is, as far as I can tell, not your average hipster indie dev. Vampire Survivor was designed by its dev Luca Poncil Galanti, a former Ultima Online admin, which is also a game we will be definitely covering in the future of this channel. He worked for several mobile gaming companies making gambling games, or it seems that was the majority of his uh, work experience. This seems to have given him a rather high skill in making shiny things that give you a big dopamine hit. But unlike his previous work in gambling games, in Vampire Survivor, there is no pay to win or gambling aspects. But with his skill as a pro gambling game designer, he still manages to get you those big dopamine hits through excellent graphical design and an engaging loot system. The average game of Vampire Survivor requires the player to survive for 30 minutes as waves of monsters descend upon them in a linear, move towards player at X variable of speed fashion. While the player uses either the WASD or arrow keys to avoid being hit by these mobs for fear of losing health. They can in turn kill these monsters by equipping weapons and items that do a fixed effect around the character with a particular damage set, range, and AoE. At each level up, which the player acquires through collecting gems dropped by dead monsters, they get the chance to select a new weapon or power-up. This is the sort of thing you suspect your average Unity dev can code after a few weeks worth of practice. So this leaves us with the question, why has this become the smash indie hit that it has? Well. As I hinted at earlier, I think it goes back to Galante's experience as a gambling game dev. Gambling devs need to consider wider aspects of player experiences than computer game devs often seem to do. Maybe they shouldn't. It is one thing to make a game that has rewarding loot, shiny numbers, and big explosions, and Galante's design succeeds in this with flying colors but it is another to successfully design the game and its mechanics around the player's addictive behaviors, including those outside of the game. Take, for example, slot machines and alcohol. If you've ever played a slot machine, you'll know, or if you have, you really should know, about the concept of return to player, or RTP. The return to player percentage gives the owners of the slot machine a roughly exact percentage of how much they will earn from your average punter and it's usually in the range of 95 to 98.9%. .9%. That's the revenue amount that will be returned to the player, meaning the house keeps the rest as profit. But there's more to RTP than just determining the profit for the house. It also gives the owner of the machine, and thus the designer of the game, some insight into how long they want the player to hang around in that location for. Take for example, if a punter puts in 10 quid, and the RTP is very, very high, he will still be hanging around the bar 15 minutes later when he finishes his beer. Say he's playing at 25p a spin, 98.9 .9 RTP, he's probably not going to be done with his beer before his 10 pounds of credit runs out. So he pops to the bar. I mean, why would you leave when you've still got credit in the machine? This is a really, really important aspect of gambling game design, but it was also a very important part of arcade design back when arcades were a thing. This arcades. This I want to suggest is sort of how Vampire Survivor works. Vampire Survivor is to coffee and tea, what slot machines are to vodka and beer. Vampire Survivor is the ultimate game to have a cup of tea or coffee to. And this, in part, explains its incredible success. You can literally play it with one hand. No deaths due to ill-timed sips. This is to me integral to the game's success. You wake up dreading work, you do your usual routine, you look at your watch and because you're an efficient, sexy bastard, you realize that you've actually got a good 15 to 20 minutes to spare before you head out the door. So you play Vampire Survivor. Heck, 
even the best run will max out at 30 minutes. The game isn't just a game, its existence feeds into your life in a way that is convenient and satisfying. While a lot of games in the modern world, MOBAs and MMORPGs in particular, demand commitment, whether it's raiding in World of Warcraft or 45 minutes banging your head against your keyboard as Lux keeps face-checking the jungle, these games often take something from you in terms of your convenience and freedom. Or at least their design can leave you feeling like that happened. I think we all know that feeling after a game of League or a raid that went badly. Whereas Vampire Survivor is there to satisfy your gaming addiction, but only when you want it to. And did I mention the $5 price tag and the fact there's no in-game pay-to-win options? Overall, there's nothing stupid or random about Vampire Survival's incredible success. It is a cleverly designed game by a clever dude whose whole career taught him the skills to achieve the success. If you watch this video till the end, throw me a like and subscribe. It helps me keep motivated to make more videos. Peace.